Hi friends, welcome to Florence program. In this video, I'm going to explain you about association mining. So association mining is one of the mining techniques in data mining or we can use in machine learning techniques also. So here I'm going to explain the association mining with some uh, algorithm. Uh, association mining or we can say frequent pattern mining. So what is frequent pattern or frequent item mining? What is frequent item mining? So here are some keywords. Let me see first item set. So item set is nothing but set of items together. We can call this as item set. Similarly, frequent item set. That is the item set which appear frequently in our data set. That is called frequent item set here where we are using this association mining or frequent pattern mining or frequent item set mining in our real world application means we are using this concept in market basket analysis so market basket analysis is nothing but all shopping all market places people are using these techniques for decision making so that they can prepare their catalog design, they can do cross marketing, they can understand the shopping behavior of customers. So for this, the people, uh, the retailers are using uh, association mining for their business. So here in association mining, we are using two types of techniques the first one is we have to find what are the items frequently occur in their data set so that is the first one then the second one we have to generate association rules so these association rule help the retailers for their decision making so this is the steps involved in association mining so two steps in association mining the first step we have to find the frequent patterns in the data set or frequent item sets in the data set then second from the result of frequent pattern we have to generate association rules so this association rules helps the retailers for making decision making so just first we will discuss the first step of frequent item set mining method so as i said earlier frequent item set is nothing but the item set which appear frequently in the data set that is called that we have to find so to find the frequent item set two methods we can use one is a priori algorithm and the second one is frequent pattern growth algorithm tree algorithm and another variations we can use vertical format of uh, arranging the data and find the frequent item set so three approaches we can use to find frequent item sets that is a priori algorithm frequent pattern growth tree algorithm then arrangement of vertical format this will give you the frequent pattern in this video i am going to explain a priori algorithm with some sample data so a priori algorithm which was proposed by uh, agarwal and srikant during the year 1994 here the a priori algorithm they have defined one term called a priori property so for every steps in the a priori algorithm, the item set must satisfy, satisfy a priori property. So a priori property is nothing but all non-empty subset of frequent item set must be frequent. That is, you have generated one frequent item set and you have to check whether it satisfy a priori property or not. That is nothing but the subset of every frequent item set must be frequent this is the a priori algorithm property a priori algorithm has a two-step process that is the first step is join step the second step is prune step so join step is nothing but we are applying the join operation that is we have set of items individually then you have to take the first item join the first item with the second item then join the first item with the third item join the first item with the fourth item so like that you have to apply join operation for the entire data this is the first step second step prune step prune step means once 
you complete the join operation, the item set you will create it as a two item set. The first one we will have first item set, then second one we will have two item set. So in the two item set, we have to check the a priori property. Also, we have to check the minimum support count. So if the item set which is not satisfy the two conditions, that item set has to be removed from the uh, list. So that is called a prune operation. So these two steps repeatedly we have to do until the null set we arrived. This is the process of a priori algorithm. Now I will take you to one example here. This is my data set I have taken. So in my data warehouse, I have taken some nine transaction with some list of items here. So this is my data set. Let me start the first step of a priori algorithm. So just we have to take all the items uniquely in this list of items. So here, I1, I2, I5, I2, I4, I2, I3, like the set of items with each transaction has been given. So first I will identify uniquely the items. So the items I1, I2, I3, I4, I5 has been repeatedly present in all the transactions. So just to let me take the item set first. So here, this is nothing but candidate generation. In a priori algorithm, we have the uh, method of candidate generation. So before applying our join operation, we have to prepare the candidate list. So this is the first step. We have identified the items uniquely. And the next, we have to find the support count. So support count is very, very important that the, we have to take the minimum support count for our calculation. So in this example, I have taken the minimum support count as two. So two I am taking means 22 percentage. How I am getting 22 percentage? So 2 divided by number of transaction. Number of transaction is 9. So 2 divided by 9 into 100 which will give, give 22 percentage. So 2 is my minimum support count. So I have taken all these things. Now I have to prepare my first list. That is uh, this is my first list and I have to check the minimum support count. So all my list satisfy the minimum support count of two. So I can keep as it is here. Now let me start the join operation. So join operation here. I1 is my first item. So jo I join I1 with I2. So this is here. I1 with I3. So this is here. Then I1 with I4 here then i1 with i5 i got it next take the next item i2 with i3 i2 with i4 i2 with i5 all this has been given here next item i3 with i4 i3 with i5 all this has been given here then the last one is i4 with i5 yes join operation we have completed now we have to get the support count next. So this is candidate generation. We have generated the candidate. Now we have to go for support count. So how do you take the support count? I1, I2 together, how many transactions in this list? So I1, I2, 1, I1, I2, 2, I1, I2, 3, I1, I2, 4. So a support count is 4. Next I1, I3. I1, I3 uh, is 1, 2, 3, 4. Four. So as similarly, for all item set, we have to find the support count in the data in our data that has been given here. Now we have to apply prune operation here. So prune operation, which is not satisfy the minimum support count, that has to be eliminated from the list. So that has been eliminated. The two item set list has been calculated here. Next, next step. Since Still, we, we have uh, steps or the uh, since these step has to be repeat until we get null set. So the next step is the third. So three item set we have to calculate. Similarly, uh, here we have to calculate I1, I2, I3, I1, I2, I5, I1, I2, I4. So that then you have to find the support count. If it is less than the support count, you have to eliminate it. So three item set we have calculated. If you go to the fourth item set, there is no fourth item set. This is the last. That is so that we have stopped here. Now, the first step over, we have calculated or we have found the frequent item set in our data 
data or for our data product. Now the second step, we have to generate the association rule. To generate association rule, we have to follow certain metrics. So here, confidence is the minimum metrics or compulsory metrics to generate association rule. Apart from this, we can use lift, we can use or we can use conviction, we can use. But the minimum metrics to generate association rule is confident. So confidence can be calculated using the formula support count of A union B divided by support count of A. So this is directly we can apply on our frequent item set and we can calculate. This also I will explain using one example. So let us take this is our item set, frequent item set. Now I am going to generate association rule. So I have to calculate the confidence. So the first step, I have to create the subset of all item set. So two item set, I1, I2, I1, I5, then I2, I5. This is two item set. One item set, I1, I2, I5. Yes, we have calculated. Now we have to generate the rule, association rule that is I1 and I2 tens I5. Then I1, I5 tens I2. That is the item not available here. So like that we have to frame the association rule along with the confident. So here the confident how we are calculating support count of I1, I2 union I5 divided by support count of I1 I2. So this will be 2 by 4, 50 percent. Similarly, for all, we have to calculate this the percentage of confidence has been given here. Suppose we fix the threshold minimum confidence as a 70 percentage. So all these rules will get eliminated, like 50, this 33, 29 get eliminated. Only the item I1, I2 who are purchasing, they will purchase the item I2. So this is one association rule. Similarly, I2, I5 will buy I1. Then the last rule, I5, whoever purchasing I5, they will purchase the item I1 and I2. This is the way we can generate association rule. This is called association mining. So association mining is nothing but generating association rule from frequent item set. So two st steps involved here. The first step, we have to find frequent item sets in our data set. Then from that frequent item set, we have to generate association rule. Then we have to evaluate the association rule using the minimum metric of confidence. Then what are the rules satisfy the minimum confidence level? That rules are called strong association rule. Hope you are all understood about association rule. In my next video, I am going to give you the implementation of association rule using Python here. Thank you.